a chance one year out from the Tokyo 2020 restart in 2021 to be joined by Thomas Bach, the president of the International Olympic Committee from Lausanne. Uh, this was a very interesting day in Tokyo as they marked one year out from what will be the opening ceremony. It was a very moving tribute uh, just to set the tone globally for what's happening in one year. What were your emotions, President Bach, as you watched what happened in the Olympic Stadium in Tokyo this morning? It was indeed uh, very moving, uh, in particular, to see uh, this uh, young athlete uh, with uh, her personal fate, you know, uh, having been diagnosed uh, with uh, leukemia and uh, now making her way back uh, to Olympic uh, sport. Uh, this was uh, very moving. And uh, then uh, the idea of our Japanese uh, friends uh, with a plus one, uh, I think uh, that uh, was very inspirational as well. So uh, we are really looking forward uh, with uh, confidence uh, for this uh, year to come. President Bach, when we have visited during the time from the postponement till now, you talked about the massive logistical challenge of rescheduling every facet of the Olympic Games. Where do we stand in that regard one year out? It's indeed a mammoth task uh, because uh, we cannot prepare just uh, for one scenario of the Games, for the Olympic Games. Uh, we have to prepare for multiple scenarios of uh, the Games. And while uh, in the preparations uh, for, uh, let's say, normal games, you know, the scenario depends uh, very much uh, on our decisions together with an organizing committee. Here, the different uh, scenarios are depending on the, the circumstances of uh, the uh, corona crisis. So uh, we have uh, to be prepared uh, for everything. And this is what uh, we are trying to do with, uh, I must say, a great uh, efficiency and determination of uh, the organizing committee in Japan, having already secured uh, all the venues, including the Olympic uh, Village. What is very important, they're also for, for the athletes, you know, because uh, now they know already about uh, the environment in which uh, they will compete. And having all these venues secured also allows uh, to keep the schedule as it was planned uh, for, for this year. So again, very important for the athletes in uh, their preparation that in all these times of uncertainty, they have at least a little bit of uh, certainty as far as uh, the venues and uh, the schedule is concerned. I know the president of the Tokyo Organizing Committee has said a significant medical advancement or a vaccine is perhaps necessary to see the games happen one year from now. Where do you stand on that topic? Well, I think we are all longing uh, for a vaccine, uh, everybody uh, around the globe, uh, because uh, this uh, would uh, clearly help to address uh, the, the, the crisis overall. And uh, there, you know, we remain committed uh, to this uh, one overarching principle we have established already before the postponement. And this means uh, to organize Olympic Games uh, uh, only by safeguarding uh, the uh, safety and the health of all people involved in the Olympic uh, Games. And uh, in this uh, framework, uh, we keep relying uh, on the advice of uh, many experts, uh, including the World uh, Health uh, Organization, which has already established uh, some risk management uh, guidelines. And uh, we will continue uh, there uh, to uh, have uh, this close cooperation uh, with uh, all these experts uh, around the globe. And uh, then, we will uh, address uh, the circumstances uh, as uh, they may arise at uh, the moment uh, uh, next year in July. I know it's not ideal and we don't know what's going to happen in the next six, eight months. Is there the possibility that we could have an Olympic Games without fans in the venues? This is clearly what we do not want. You know, if uh, it were up to us, uh, we would like to see a packed uh, stadia with enthusiastic fans uh, from all around uh, the world. But as uh, so many other of uh, these scenarios, it does not uh, totally uh, depend on us. 
Uh, so uh, we are uh, preparing for multiple uh, scenarios uh, under very different uh, circumstances uh, of which we do not know which one will become uh, a reality and uh, then uh, we'll have to take uh, the decision at uh, the appropriate uh, time. It's uh, too early here to, to speculate but uh, of course again you know the, the right. Olympic uh, spirit uh, would be at its best uh, with a full uh, stadium. Then there's the issue that has been brought up that it may not be the same type of games that were planned that become the games that are executed in 2021. And we understand cost, everything with the virus, all that goes into that. For the person who's back in the U.S. who will be watching the Olympic Games, for the athletes who are competing, do you think they'll notice anything different about the games in the many plans that are being drawn up right now? Oh, we have uh, to adapt uh, the games uh, to uh, the situation and to the crisis. You know, we are uh, not living in a spacecraft uh, there with the Olympic Games. Uh, we are living in the middle of uh, society. So the games have to be adapted uh, to uh, the environment uh, which uh, then exists in, in the world. And uh, this is uh, what we mean when we say we will optimize and simplify uh, the games. But I can assure uh, the athletes uh, that uh, we will not uh, touch uh, two issues. One is the athletes and the other one is sport. Uh, there uh, we uh, will make sure that uh, the athletes uh, will have uh, this uh, stage uh, to shine uh, to which uh, they are used in Olympic uh, Games and uh, which uh, they would have enjoyed uh, from now on, from today on, uh, in uh, Tokyo 2020. President Bach, what have you heard from the athletes, the national governing bodies around the world about how the athletes as a whole have been dealing with the delay in the games being postponed one year? No, it was uh, and is very difficult for uh, the athletes. And of course, the situation is very different in the different uh, countries uh, because uh, there are in different stages of uh, the crisis. Uh, so uh, the athletes uh, had to adapt uh, and they they're adapting and now in some countries uh, they are back to the national training centers but they still do not have uh, competitions they still do not know when the next competition in their sport uh, will take place so there is still a lot of uncertainty and i can feel with these athletes uh, what it means uh, to prepare mm. uh, for an olympic games in such an uncertain situation. On the other hand, I must say, I, knowing this, I'm admiring very much uh, so many athletes who at uh, this uh, critical time have not uh, only adapted uh, themselves uh, to the circumstances, but uh, who have been role models uh, for uh, the entire uh, population, showing them uh, the uh, relevance, the importance of uh, sport, uh, motivating uh, them uh, to, uh, to do sport, to exercise, uh, also contributing to the mental health of uh, the people. In a wonderful program, uh, they managed uh, together with the IOC, uh, the uh, Stay Strong, Stay Active, uh, Stay Healthy uh, program, which uh, culminated on Olympic Day on 23rd of uh, June in uh, the biggest Olympic workout ever in all 24 time zones. Uh, making uh, hmm. more than half a billion people familiar uh, with this uh, action. So there I can only uh, thank you, uh, athletes, and uh, congratulations. This is uh, a really Olympic spirit uh, at its best. One last one on Tokyo, then I have one other topic to get to with you. If there is some reason that the Games cannot be held one year from now, would they be postponed again or would they be cancelled? Uh, we are working with full commitment uh, there uh, on the Games uh, starting on 23rd of July 2021 in uh, Tokyo. Uh, this is uh, what uh, we are uh, focused on. For this uh, we prepare together with our uh, Japanese uh, uh, friends and uh, for everything else uh, this is speculation right now and we should 
I think we are well advised, and uh, there I would also like to ask the public uh, a little bit, you know, uh, not to speculate uh, too much uh, with, with the ifs and whens and uh, not and uh, how, uh, because uh, in many countries in, in the world, you do not know under which circumstances uh, you can leave your house tomorrow or whether you can leave it at all. Uh, you do not know uh, whether mm -hmm. you can visit a restaurant or what regulations you have to respect. So it, it's really uh, too much expected uh, from us and the organizing committee uh, to know today all the details of uh, the biggest uh, and com most complex uh, event uh, in uh, the world, uh, the Olympic uh, Games. So we are confident uh, that we can unify the world uh, in one year uh, uh, from now and that we can send a strong message of uh, solidarity and of uh, this uh, unity of uh, uh, humanity in all our diversity. Speaking of messages, we've seen a lot of messages after the protests that happened in the United States regarding race, social injustice, and we know Rule 50 of the Olympic Charter speaks directly to that, prohibiting political demonstrations or such events like that in the Olympic venues. I know this is a topic that the Athletes Commission has been looking into. It's something that you have been listening to. Where do we stand in that regard for athletes as they look at competing and perhaps their shows of expression of solidarity come 2021? Well, first of all, uh, it is important to emphasize uh, that uh, the athletes uh, have manifold uh, opportunities uh, to express uh, themselves uh, in uh, press conferences, in interviews, in social uh, media, in team meetings, in conversations uh, with their fellow athletes in the Olympic Village and so on. So there are many, many opportunities. Uh, Rule 50 relates only to the field of play and the, the ceremonies. And uh, in this uh, context, uh, we have uh, this uh, dialogue uh, between the IOC Athletes Commission and many uh, athletes representatives uh, from around uh, the world. And uh, we are waiting uh, for this uh, result uh, because uh, we want to, to see how in a a dignified and non-divisive uh, way, maybe new formats uh, can be uh, found uh, for the athletes uh, to uh, show their support for one of the key messages of the Olympic Games, which is non-discrimination. The Olympic Games themselves are maybe one of the most powerful demonstrations of non-discrimination. Having the athletes from all the 206 National Olympic Committees plus uh, the IOC refugee Olympic team competing together, living together under one roof in, in the Olympic uh, village. Everybody is being equal. Everybody is equally treated, respecting the same rules. I think this is really a powerful symbol of non-discrimination. And the next step from the Athletes Commission would be what? The next step is to continue uh, this uh, dialogue and uh, then uh, to come back uh, okay. to uh, the IOC executive uh, board with uh, the result of uh, this uh, dialogue. Uh, so uh, we should not uh, take any stand uh, now. Uh, we see that, and this you can uh, uh, hear and uh, read in the press as well, that uh, there are among the athletes uh, also very different uh, opinions. So uh, we are looking mm -hmm. uh, forward uh, then uh, to getting the result uh, of uh, this worldwide dialogue. Muhammad Ali was very well known for his athletic prowess, but also his global reach and his activism as well. And I know over your left shoulder there is the torch that Muhammad Ali used to light the Olympic flame in that memorable moment in Atlanta, 1996. I wonder what you are thinking when you uh, take a moment to catch your breath and think about what the opening ceremony, that powerful moment in sports, what it might mean if it happens in Tokyo after all that the world has been through the last few months and the ensuing 12 months. What thoughts come to mind when you think about the power of this opening ceremony one year from now and what it might look like? 
Well, this uh, will be very special because uh, this opening uh, ceremony uh, will, uh, first of all, uh, send uh, the message which Olympic Games are always uh, sending. This is uh, the unity of uh, humanity in all our diversity. But in Tokyo it will be more. It will be a message of uh, solidarity and a message of uh, hope. A message of solidarity because uh, what we have learned from this crisis is that we can only overcome it with more solidarity. More solidarity within societies and among uh, societies. And we can only overcome this uh, crisis when we help each other in solidarity. And this is uh, what uh, Muhammad Ali was uh, standing for. I quoted him uh, last week in the IOC session uh, where he said, you know, mm. we have to help each other because uh, there is only one human race. And uh, there, this is uh, the, the message. We have uh, to, to help each other. It is good to respect each other, but it's better to help each other and to overcome uh, this uh, crisis. And for this, uh, then uh, the opening ceremony can uh, really be a, a great, great festival of uh, solidarity, uh, hope, and an optimistic outlook uh, for uh, humankind uh, after this uh, deep crisis we are still in at this moment. Well, I'm so glad that uh, that torch is the background for our interview and our chat because that's one of the great moments for American sports fans, one of the great moments in the Olympic opening ceremony. And hopefully one year from now, 25 years later, we'll all be part of another great and unforgettable moment in the Olympic opening ceremony. And hopefully a year from now, we'll be listening to your speech to the athletes and all of us that are gathered in Tokyo. President Bach, thank you for your time, your candor with us. And we look forward to doing this in person very soon, uh, hopefully in Tokyo before the Games. Thank you again, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Mike. Uh, always a pleasure. And I'm really looking forward to, to the moment uh, when we can do uh, such an interview uh, in uh, person and see each other uh, again uh, then in a safe and healthy environment.